Hello and uh, welcome to this week's uh, meeting of uh, P&S Processing in Memory uh, course. I am Rakesh Nadig and I'm a PhD student in the Safari Research Group. Today I'll be presenting uh, our recent work uh, on in-flash processing called Flash Cosmos, uh, in-flash bulk bitwise operations using inherent computation capability of NAND flash memory. Uh, let's quickly jump into the uh, executor summary uh, of this work. Uh, so bulk bitwise operations uh, such as bitwise and, bitwise or, bitwise not are widely used in many important data intensive applications uh, such as databases, graph processing, cryptography, etc. Uh, some of the limitations of uh, current approaches of uh, performing uh, bulk bitwise operations or some of the new uh, works which have been proposed are, uh, there are several challenges. One of them is uh, the data movement uh, between the storage and the compute units in uh, traditional systems and in storage processing techniques, which uh, reduces the performance and uh, energy efficiency of uh, bulk bitwise operations. And uh, in some of the newer in flash processing techniques, which uh, considerably improve the performance and energy efficiency over the traditional uh, approaches, but they are limited by the serial reading of uh, operands within the flash chips. Uh, and this is one of the major bottlenecks with in-flash processing techniques. Another bottleneck with in-flash processing technique is uh, that it provides the low, very low reliability during computation. So our goal is to, act, uh, to improve performance, energy efficiency, and reliability of uh, bulk bitwise operations in, in flash processing. Uh, uh, techniques. And uh, to this end, we propose uh, Flash Cosmos, which is flash computation with one shot multi operand sensing, in a, uh, which is uh, based on two key ideas. Uh, one of the first idea is called multi word line sensing, which enables multi operand bulk bitwise operations with a single sen uh, sensing operation. And we uh, and the second idea is called is uh, enhanced SLC mode programming which increases the voltage margin between the erased and the programmed states of a cell to provide higher reliability during in-flash computation. Uh, let's look at the key results. Uh, so Flash Cosmos is evaluated using 160 real 3D NAND flash chips uh, with the and with the state-of-the-art SSD simulator on uh, three real world uh, applic uh, applications. And Flash Cosmos improves the performance and energy efficiency uh, considerably over uh, traditional uh, systems in storage processing techniques and uh, the state of the art in flash processing technique uh, while also providing very high reliability during computation. So in today's presentation, I'll be uh, briefly go going over the motivation for our work and discussing how current approaches uh, do not uh, uh, perform bulk bitwise operations uh, with high perform uh, provide, while providing high performance and energy efficiency. Uh, and next I'll, I'll discuss uh, briefly the background on NAND flash uh, programming and uh, NAND flash uh, cell. And uh, next we'll discuss the key ideas of uh, flash cosmos and uh, uh, the evaluation and uh, summarize the work at the end. So let's jump to the motivation. Uh, so bulk bitwise operations are uh, widely used in many uh, important applications in modern computing uh, systems. For example, databases, web search, genome analysis, cryptography, hyperdimensional computing. But uh, as I mentioned earlier, the, the data movement between the compute units and the memory hierarchy significantly affect the performance of uh, the bulk bitwise operations. So uh, let's look at what is the data movement bottleneck that we are talking about. Uh, so in conventional systems, um, the computation is performed in the typically in the host CPU, and the data has to be moved. Uh, if if the data is stored in the storage system, then it has to be moved through the memory hierarchy. So let's look at uh, a conventional system where there is a host processor. It could be a CPU or a GPU and a main memory and a storage device. So, uh, so if the 
computation uh, has to happen, then it, the data is read from the storage device to the main memory. And uh, the data, the host processor reads the data from the main memory uh, to the CPU registers. And uh, we see that the, the storage IO bandwidth um, is around 8 Gbps and uh, the memory bandwidth is is between 10, 10 to hundreds of Gbps. So the computation happens within the host processor and then the data has to be uh, written back to the main memory and from the main memory back to the storage. So uh, looking at uh, this kind of a mechanism, we see that the main uh, bottleneck is uh, the storage IO bandwidth, uh, where the data has to be moved between the storage and the main memory. And uh, this is very less compared to the memory bandwidth, which is between tens to hundreds of GBPS. So the external IO bandwidth of the storage system uh, is the main bottleneck for data movement in, uh, in conventional systems or uh, outside storage processing, as we call. So to improve this uh, kind of a mechanism, we look at near data processing where uh, the computation happens uh, closer to where the data resides. So we have uh, many prior works which look at near data processing at uh, different levels of memory hierarchy. So uh, we, uh, we have compute cache at the SRAM cache level, then uh, at in, in DRAM, uh, the in-memory computation is performed by uh, prior works like AMBIT and ROCLONE. And uh, in uh, NVM or emerging non-volatile memories, we have Pinatubo. And uh, in storage, we have a prior work called Biscuit. Uh, and in and Parabit is, a, uh, is one of the recent works which performs uh, bulk bitwise operations within the flash chips. So we... Uh, we look at these two uh, areas of in storage and in flash processing because uh, large data sets uh, do not fit into the main memory and uh, they need to be stored in the uh, in the storage units and uh, that is where we would like to uh, propose our uh, our work so uh, let's look at in storage processing technique uh, so in storage processing performs computation using an in storage computation unit within the storage device. And uh, this computation unit could be embedded cores or FPGA. And ISP actually reduces uh, the external data movement considerably by transferring only the computation results to the host. Uh, so we look at the same uh, system uh, that we looked at uh, previously, where we have a host processor uh, that could be CPU or GPU and uh, a main memory. And in the storage uh, system, we look at uh, an in-storage computation unit and several NAND flash chips, uh, which store the data. So, so if we have to perform uh, computation uh, within the storage device, we read the data from the flash chips to the in-storage computation unit. Uh, or the in-storage computation unit reads the data from the flash chips uh, and uh, perform the computation there. And only the, the result is, uh, the computed result is transferred to the uh, host processor. And uh, we see that the storage internal IO bandwidth is around 9.6 Gbps. And uh, how, how do we get uh, this number, it's based on the PCIe uh, Gen 4 uh, as an example, and uh, with four lanes. So, so we see that the, the data moment is considerably reduced. However, we, we still see that uh, this bandwidth of, uh, uh, of the storage device, the internal bandwidth could, could be a data moment bottleneck if, if we have a large data set. So the internal I/O bandwidth is the main bottleneck in the in in storage processing techniques. Next, uh, we look at in flash processing, where the computation is performed within the flash chips. Um, so current works, current uh, proposals which perform in flash processing techniques in in flash processing, they per, they read the data operands in a serial manner. 
and then perform computation uh, in the uh, in the within the flash chips and this reduces the internal data movement bottleneck as well uh, and only transfers the computation results uh, to the in storage computation unit so uh, if we look at the same figure uh, we have a host processor uh, the cpu and gpu the main memory and the storage device so uh, so the computation happens within the flash chips uh, by reading the operands in a serial manner and then the result is transferred to the in storage computation unit and uh, and then back to the host cpu so uh, we see that the the data movement is reduced between the flash chips to the and the in storage computation unit however uh, if we have to um, identify the bottleneck in in this kind of a mechanism we uh, see that the serial uh, sensing of a bottle uh, of the data operands is one of the main bottlenecks because uh, a read operation is quite costly in NAND flash chips. And uh, if there are hundreds of operands, then uh, reading each operand from the flash, uh, flash page would be very expensive. So, uh, so let's uh, look at the uh, data sensing bottleneck in IFP a bit more closely. So one of the prior works that I just mentioned, which was called Parabit, uh, performs bulk bitwise operations uh, by controlling the latching circuit of the page buffer. And uh, let's look at the organization of an AND flash chip. So we have uh, uh, several pages within the AND flash chip and a page buffer which is uh, uh, which is used uh, uh, during the program and the read operation uh, from the flash chip. So let's say the uh, several operands are stored in the NAND flash chip. Uh, we show a few operands here. And uh, the way the uh, prior work or the state of the art IFP technique does the inflow in flash processing is uh, it performs uh, data sensing of uh, let's say operand A uh, first. Then to perform a bitwise AND operation, it uh, reads the second operand B and uh, in the page buffer when the result is uh, when the second data sensing operation is performed the result gets accumulated and uh, we get the uh, the bitwise and of these two operands and uh, next when we read uh, operand C the the result gets accumulated and we get the bitwise and of uh, these three operands and so on so uh, if there are hundreds of operands, then we need to read every operand and, uh, and the result gets accumulated in the page buffer. So the serial data sensing is the key bottleneck in uh, in flash processing techniques. Uh, this is not the only uh, challenge limitation with the in flash uh, state of the art in flash processing technique. We also have uh, reliability issues in uh, IFP. And uh, we look at uh, reliability issues now. So a NAND flash memory technology uh, generally suffers from very high Robit error rate due to many sources of disturbances. And uh, to mitigate these uh, disturbances, uh, NAND flash memory technology or uh, devices use uh, ECC and data randomization techniques to improve the reliability of flash memory. And uh, prior works, our IFP techniques in general cannot leverage uh, ECC and data randomization uh, because the computation is performed within the flash chips uh, during data sensing and uh, ECC and uh, the randomization units are located in the SSD controller. So here we see uh, a figure which shows the components of an SSD controller and the, uh, uh, the NAND flash chips connected to the SSD controller. So we see that uh, the NAND flash chips are connected using uh, uh, shared channels to the SSD controller and the ECC engine and the scrambler are uh, located in the uh, SSD controller. So whenever uh, for improving the, to improve the reliability, if the data uh, has to be, um, the data has to be moved to the ECC engine through the channel and then the error correction happens and then it has to be moved back to the flash chip. So this uh, 
uh, data moment cannot be uh, offered. Uh, we cannot afford this kind of a data moment when we perform in flash processing. So, uh, so uh, reliability is a major concern in uh, in flash processing techniques. So, uh, so prior IFP approaches uh, suffer from erroneous computation results due to high raw bit error rate of NAND flash memory. And we see that uh, if there are, uh, let's say, if there are errors in uh, some of the operands, when we perform the data sensing, the, the errors are uh, retained. And uh, in some cases, it can be compounded. Uh, the errors can be compounded and uh, we may not get, uh, we uh, may get erroneous computation results. So, so prior IFP techniques require the application to be very uh, highly error tolerant. And uh, this is one of the, uh, the major issues with uh, current IFP techniques. So our goal in this work is to address the bottleneck of uh, state-of-the-art IFP techniques, which is the uh, serial sensing of uh, operands. And uh, we also want to make IFP uh, more reliable by providing accurate computation results. So uh, let's look at our proposal. Uh, so Flash Cosmos enables computation on multiple operands using a single sensing operation or a single read operation. And it also provides high reliability during in-flash computation. And by high reliability, I mean uh, we we want zero errors in the in the computation results. So let's uh, look at the uh, the first part, which is how uh, computation on multiple op operands is performed using a single sensing operation. So let's say we have a number of operands stored in different uh, pages of the NAND flash chip. So in Flash Cosmos, we uh, do simultaneous data sensing. Uh, so here we show uh, the simultaneous data sensing on three operands. So uh, it is done uh, at once and we get the result, uh, the bitwise result of bitwise and operation of the three uh, operands uh, in the page buffer immediately. So this is the, this is our proposal and this is, uh, this shows a considerable improvement in terms of uh, performance compared to the state-of-the-art IFP technique. So uh, now that we have looked at uh, the current approaches and uh, the limitations of uh, these, uh, the current approaches and the techniques that uh, we discussed, let's look at uh, some background and uh, see how uh, NAND flash memory can inherently support bulk bitwise operations. Uh, so let's look, let's jump to the background uh, section. So if, if we look at a flash cell, a flash cell stores uh, data by adjusting the amount of charge on the, in the cell. So if we have, um, if we, if the flash cell stores one, it means that it's in the array state and uh, the, the amount of charge is very low. A flash cell stores zero, or we denote that it stores zero if it is in a programmed state and it has high amount of charge. And when we activate uh, a flash cell, if it is in the array state, then uh, it operates as a resistor. And if, if when we activate the flash cell, if it is in the programmed state, then it acts as an open switch. This is very important in, uh, in our multi-word line sensing uh, mechanism. So uh, coming to the organization of uh, uh, flash cells, if the flash cells are serially connected, then we call it as an AND string. So the number of flash cells are connected in a, in a serial manner. And uh, these flash cells are always connected to a bit line. Uh, so, so when we want to, uh, so NAND flash memory reads data by checking the bit line current. So uh, the bit line current, uh, the uh, when we read the flash cell, uh, the current passes through the bit line, and then this, there is a sense amplifier at the end of the NAND string, which reads the uh, the current and uh, uh, decodes the uh, the value. So, if there are a number of, uh, uh, if we want to read a single cell, uh, then uh, we we call this as a target cell, and the other cells in the NAND string which we don't want to read are called non non-target cells. 
and these uh, non-target cells are operate as resistors regardless of the data stored and uh, the target cell operates as a resistor if if it stores uh, value 1 or it, if it's in the array state and it stores uh, it acts as an open switch if it is um, in the programmed state so uh, when during a read operation the bit line current flows through the uh, nand string uh, through the bit line and uh, if if the cell is a resistor uh, acts as a resistor then uh, the value is read as 1 because the current is the current flows through the bit line completely uh, next we look at the case where uh, the cell uh, the cell is in the program state and when we do the activation it acts as an open switch so in this case the uh, the bit line current can, cannot flow through the the nand string and we read the uh, the value of the read operation as zero so uh, now that we have looked at uh, how a read operation works on uh, on the NAND, uh, in a single NAND string, we see the organization of a NAND block. A NAND block consists of uh, many NAND strings connected to different bit lines. And uh, this, this comprises a NAND block. And a single word line controls a large number of flash cells in a horizontal manner. So it, it connects number of flash cells uh, across different bit lines as you can see here in this figure. And this provides a high level, high bit level parallelism. So uh, these bit lines are also shared across different uh, blocks. So we saw a single block in the previous slide and now we see multiple blocks, but these blocks share the bit lines. Uh, and uh, so when we look at this figure, we uh, see a similarity to uh, digital logic gates. So if we see this, uh, uh, if we see the NAND string within a particular block, we see a similarity to the uh, two input and uh, logic or a digital and logic because the transistors are connected in serial. And we see that the cells are connected in serial uh, as well in, uh, in an NAND string. And if we see uh, multiple uh, blocks, then we see uh, a similarity to digital or logic where the transistors are connected in parallel. Uh, so we, uh, this, is, this shows a two input or uh, gate. And uh, so uh, cells connected in different uh, blocks uh, form a digital, uh, can be read simultaneously to uh, get digital or output. So that's that's about the background of uh, NAND flash cell and uh, the read operation and how NAND flash inherently supports uh, a bitwise AND and bitwise OR operation. Now let's look at uh, the key idea or the key mechanism of flash cosmos. So uh, flash cosmos uh, enables uh, in flash bulk bitwise operations on multiple operands with a single sensing operation using uh, multi-word line sensing. And uh, let's look at multi-word line sensing in a bit more detail. So uh, multi-word line sensing has two, two parts to it. One is called the intra-block uh, MWS. So intra-block means within a block, if we perform a simultaneous activation of multiple word lines, we, are, we achieve uh, bitwise AND operation. So let's look at how that works. So uh, in this block, we have, let's say, four word lines. And uh, we, we would like to read uh, two word lines in this block simultaneously. So the word line three and word line four are uh, non-target cells, and they operate as resistors, uh, irrespective of the data that is stored in, uh, in these word lines. And the target target cells uh, in word line one and word line two operate as either resistors if they are in uh, array state or uh, open switches if they are in program state. So when we read uh, simultaneously read the uh, read these uh, word lines, uh, if there is a uh, open switch in the circuit in the NAND string, then the current cannot flow through the NAND string, and uh, we read it as a we read the result as zero. 
and if there is if if all the uh, cells in the in the NAND string uh, operate as resistors, then the current flows through the NAND string, and uh, we read the result as one. So, so a bit line is uh, reads as one only when all the target cells store uh, one. So this is equivalent to the bitwise AND of target cells. So uh, when we look at uh, let's say four word lines. When we read four word lines simultaneously, we see that uh, in each of these uh, NAND strings, we have a cell which operates as uh, an open switch, and hence all the uh, all the uh, the result of all the bit uh, read operations of all the NAND strings shows zero, which means that a bit line reads zero even if only one of the target cells stores zero. So uh, this is equivalent to the bitwise AND of all the target cells. So, so intra-block MWS enables bitwise AND of multiple pages in the same block by a, a single sensing operation. Now, uh, coming to inter-block MWS, so, uh, so in, intra-block helps us in performing AND operation. Now we need to perform OR operation. So for OR operation, as, as I described earlier, we need to, uh, we saw that um, NAND strings across different blocks uh, are similar to the way transistors are connected in a digital OR logic. So we look at multiple blocks here. And uh, for simplicity, we show a single word line within each block. And uh, so if we see here, uh, sorry. Uh, so uh, when we uh, simultaneously read two word lines across different blocks, which is block one and block I, um, and I, uh, as I described, the bit lines are shared across different blocks. So since they are in parallel, even if there is a uh, open switch in the uh, in one of the word lines, and the, if there is a resistor in the other word line, it still operates as uh, the end result is still one because the current still flows through one of the uh, NAND strings. And um, if only if both of the NAND, uh, both the cells in, in the NAND in connected to the bit line uh, is, uh, is acts, acts as open switch, then the result would be zero. So, uh, so bit line reads as zero only if when all the target cells store zero which is similar to the bitwise OR logic. And uh, here we see a case where we have three blocks and uh, uh, one word line in each block. And when we perform the uh, simultaneous activation uh, during a read, uh, we see that uh, only when um, all, uh, here we see a case where uh, even though there are open uh, cells which act as open switches, we still see the result as one because there is a resist, there is a cell in the, or there are NAND strings where all cells act as, act as uh, resistors. So the current still passes through the NAND string and uh, the sense amplifier can read the result. So, so here we see that uh, a bit line reads as one only when one of the target cells stores uh, one. So Flash Cosmos with interblock MWS enables uh, bitwise OR operation of multiple uh, pages across different blocks with a single sensing operation. So now we have looked at uh, uh, bitwise AND and bitwise OR uh, in, uh, in, the, in the NAND flash memory. Now, uh, uh, bulk bit, I mean, uh, applications, uh, perform other kinds of bitwise operations as well, like bitwise NOT, bitwise NAND, NOR, XOR, and so on. So we need to see how we can support uh, these operations as well. So, so for bitwise NOT, uh, Flash Cosmos exploits inverse read operation, which is already supported in uh, modern NAND flash memory for, and it's used for copy back operations. So, uh, so we we see that uh, if we store the data, then uh, uh, we can get the inverse of that uh, data 
in the NAND flash memory itself. And that is how we achieve the bitwise NOT operation. Then we look at bitwise NAND and NOR. And um, here we use the inverse read operation uh, along with bitwise AND and OR operation. So uh, we use, uh, we achieve this using uh, the MWS operation uh, along with inverse read. And for bitwise XOR and XNOR, we use the uh, XOR operation, which is already supported between um, the multiple latches that are available in NAND flash memory. And uh, uh, so we, we use this feature to perform bitwise XOR and XNOR. So, uh, so Flash Cosmos enables uh, perf uh, in-flash op bulk bitwise operations on multiple operands with single sensing operation. Now we look at how uh, we can make this uh, single sensing operation or in-flash computation uh, more reliable. And we increase the reliability of the in-flash computation uh, by, by using enhanced SLC mode programming. So uh, in enhanced SLC mode programming. Uh, so let's look at uh, SLC mode programming at the start. So SLC mode programming uh, provides a large voltage margin between the erased and the programmed states. So here we see the distribution of uh, cells in uh, when we pro program in SLC mode. And we see the uh, on the x-axis is the threshold voltage and the on the y-axis is the distribution of the number of cells. And uh, so, so this wide voltage margin actually helps in uh, mitigating the disturbance, which uh, many disturbances, which actually cause the, uh, the volt threshold voltage of the cells in the array state or the program state to, uh, to shift. And this kind of uh, uh, makes the, uh, read, uh, read operation more difficult because uh, if the cells come closer to each other, the cells in the erased and the programmed states, then it's harder to read and decode the value. So, so this uh, SLC mode programming is uh, still very highly error prone um, if we don't use uh, ECC and data randomization techniques. So, as I mentioned earlier, uh, IFP techniques cannot leverage ECC and data randomization uh, because they are uh, these units are uh, are located in the SSD controller and uh, the computation happens within the flash chips. So, so how do we improve this? Uh, improve the reliability without using data randomization or ECC techniques. So uh, to to do this, we sub, we pr propose uh, enhanced SLC mode programming, which where we further increase the voltage margin between the erased and the programmed states. So, um, experimentally, we have uh, identified that the current voltage margin that is there in the SLC mode programming is not enough uh, without the use of ECC and randomization techniques. And uh, you can read about it in the paper. Uh, so, in, in, so in order to achieve uh, a higher reliability without ECC and randomization uh, techniques, we should uh, increase the voltage margin. And uh, so a wider voltage margin between the two states improves the reliability by making the cells less vulnerable to errors. And uh, how do we achieve this is by performing additional steps in the incremental step pulse programming scheme to increase the voltage margin. So when we uh, perform additional steps in the ISPP scheme, we, uh, we are able to increase the voltage margin and the program state has, the cells in the program state have a much higher threshold. So, so ESP improves the reliability of in-flash computation without the use of ECC and or data randomization techniques. And ESP can be used to improve the reliability of prior in-flash processing techniques as well. So, so ESP generally uh, improves the reliability. Now, uh, now that we have looked at how multi-word line sensing uh, improves the performance of uh, IFP techniques and ESP can improve the reliability. We need to see how we can support um, uh, Flash Cosmos uh, 
in in a storage system so to do that we support uh, we provide new flash commands and uh, we we actually provide three new flash commands to support flash cosmos and uh, the three new flash commands are called uh, mws esp and xor so mws as you know as i just described performs multi word line sensing uh, so with mws command we can perform intra and inter block mws and we also we can also perform inverse read operation and uh, the accumulation of results of all the reads so as part of mws command we also provide a new command slot which is called iscm and this uh, iscm uh, iscm uh, command uh, slot also uh, enables the ssd controller to turn on or uh, turn off four features so the, the first feature is the inverse read mode and uh, the second and the third feature is basically initialization of the sensing and the cache latch and then we can also uh, enable the data movement between the sensing and the cache latch and the details of i, I don't want to go to go into details of these uh, flags but you can uh, re read more about it in the paper so since we uh, also support uh, multi word line sensing in uh, traditional read operation we can uh, provide the address of the single page that we want to read but in our multi word line sensing mechanism we can we need to support uh, more number of pages so to do that we provide a page bitmap uh, in the address slot which basically tells us the number the the word lines that needs to be activated for the multi word line sensing operation and also we provide four different uh, address slots unlike the traditional read operation uh, command sequence so with four address slots we can perform inter block mws command and uh, the esp operation uh, ESP command works very similar to the regular program command, but internally it uh, increases the number of ISPP steps and uh, the, uh, widens the uh, voltage margin between the erased and the program states. And the XOR command performs bitwise XOR operation between the sensing and the cache latches. So uh, let's look at an at an operational example of how uh, flash cosmos performs uh, bulk bitwise operations here we see an equation which has uh, a number of uh, bitwise and and bitwise or operations uh, so let's look at the second part of the equation first we have uh, uh, c1 plus c3 c1 bitwise or with c3 and uh, d2 bitwise or with d4 and we perform a bitwise and between the, the results of these two operations. So, so if we take that uh, at the start, the operands are basically stored in, uh, let's say block three and block four, the operand C and D are stored in block three and block four. And uh, the, um, what we do is we, here in this uh, sub equation, we have two bitwise or operations and one bitwise and operation. Uh, so generally we, we would like to perform more bitwise and operations because interblock MWS or uh, sorry, intra block MWS uh, consumes lesser power because it performs simultaneous sensing within a block. So what we do is we use De Morgan's law to convert this uh, part of the equation into uh, ha to have more AND operations, bitwise AND operations. And uh, with De Morgan's law, then we need to basically use inverse data of C1 and C3 and D2 and D4. So uh, what we do is we program the inverse data of C1 and uh, C3 uh, into blocks three and four, uh, blocks three, block three and um, also d2 and d4 into block 4 and uh, we issue an mws command uh, for uh, c1 and c3 and d2 and d4 using two command slots as we can see here 
and in each command slot we we provide the page in the page bitmap we provide the word lines to be uh, uh, to be simultaneously read and uh, the flags also show that we we use the inverse read mode and uh, we uh, sorry we uh, also initialize the sensing and the cache latch uh, latches because this is the first operation in the of the equation and we need to reset the sensing and the cache latch next we move to the uh, first part of the equation which is uh, having four uh, or let's say three bitwise and oper uh, operations and one bitwise or operation so uh, we cannot simplify this uh, further or let's say we cannot make uh, uh, i mean convert this equation to have more bitwise and operations so we perform it as it is and then here we again um, use two command slots and we uh, in each command slot we provide the page bitmap and uh, and basically with the iscm command slot we uh, we reset the uh, inverse read mode and then the uh, sensing and the cache latch initialization uh, because we want the uh, the result to be accumulated in the in the page buffer so so we disable the uh, these flags and at the end of the second step of the operation we uh, we get the result which is the uh, end result of the entire equation so this is how flash cosmos uh, performs bulk bitwise operations this is just an example so uh, we have looked at how uh, flash cosmos uses uh, multi word line sensing enhanced slc mode programming um, the new command slots to enable system support and also um, uh, an operational example which uh, uh, which shows how flash cosmos can uh, perform bulk bitwise operations now let's jump into evaluation so uh, the evaluation methodology consists of two parts one is uh, we use uh, 160 real state of the art 3d nand flash chips uh, to uh, to perform uh, real uh, evaluation of uh, flash cosmos the reliability and the uh, the feasibility of uh, flash cosmos in real in commercial uh, flash chips uh, so in the real device characterization we validate the feasibility performance and reliability of flash cosmos and we do it on 160 48 layer 3d nand flash uh, 3d tlc nand flash chips and we have tested around uh, three and a half million uh, more than three and a half million word lines and uh, these have been tested under worst case operating conditions uh, and these conditions uh, include one year retention time at uh, 10,000 p cycles and uh, also worst case data patterns so the results indicate that um, uh, that both intra and inter block mws operations require no changes to the cell array of commodity and flash chips and both both mws operations can activate multiple word lines and in case of intra block mws it can do up to 48 word lines at a time and inter block can do up to four word lines across the uh, basically, uh, one word line across four blocks at the same time with a small increase in, increase in sensing latency. And this increase is less than 10%. And ESP significantly improves the reliability of computation results, which means that we achieve zero bit errors at, in the tested flash cells. Then let's look at uh, the three real world applications uh, which we use for benchmarking uh, Flash Cosmos along with other techniques. So to do this, we use a simulation uh, mechanism. We use MQSIM, which is uh, one of the state-of-the-art SSD simulators to model the performance and uh, performance of Flash Cosmos and the baselines. And uh, so we use three real-world applications, and uh, these applications rely 
heavily on uh, bulk bitwise operations. So the first application is called bitmap indices, uh, which is uh, uh, related to database uh, query. And uh, this consists of a lot of bitwise and operations uh, of up to 1000 uh, operands. And uh, image segmentation is an image processing kernel, which performs bitwise and on three operands. But these three operands are, uh, are uh, very large. And then there is a, a graph search uh, workload called kclick star uh, listing, which performs bitwise or operation of up to 32 operands. And uh, to evaluate Flash Cosmos with uh, prior techniques, we implement uh, outside storage processing where we model a multi-core CPU where the computation is performed. We, uh, we use Intel i7 uh, processor there. And uh, we also model uh, an in-storage hardware accel uh, accelerator for ISP uh, technique. And we also model the, the Parabit uh, uh, the prior work, which, which is the state of the art in, in flash processing mechanism. So let's look at the, the results for performance and energy efficiency. So uh, we show the performance of uh, uh, for all the three workloads as well as an average of all the three workloads. And we on the y-axis we show uh, in log scale the speed up over OSP for all the three uh, uh, baselines or uh, for the for ISP and Parabit along with Flash Cosmos, and we show the results for uh, uh, the, uh, for energy efficiency as well, and uh, this is also the benefit over OSP. Uh, we show on the y-axis in log scale, and uh, on the x-axis we see the the three trace the applications and the average. So uh, in terms of uh, speed up, uh, we see that uh, Flash Cosmos uh, provides a speed up of around twenty five x over uh, uh, ISP and 3.5x uh, over Parabit. And in terms of energy efficiency, we see that um, Flash Cosmos uh, improves the energy efficiency by 13.4x and 3.3x uh, over uh, para ISP and Parabit. So uh, Flash Cosmos generally provides significant performance and energy uh, benefits over the baselines. And uh, the performance and energy benefits can only increase with uh, more number of operands. Uh, this is clearly uh, the case because with an increase in number of operands, we can perform simultaneous uh, uh, data sensing and uh, this re improves the performance and uh, redu reduces the data movement. So uh, these are the results. We uh, So in, in the paper, we have a lot more results and uh, insights and analysis. Uh, and I would encourage everyone to uh, look into the paper. Here is the link. So um, yeah, so the paper has more uh, uh, experiments and analysis to uh, to go through. So um, now coming to the summary. Uh, so Flash Cosmos is the is the first work to enable multi operand bulk bitwise operations with a single sensing operation and high and provides high reliability. Uh, Flash Cosmos improves the performance by 3.5 times, 25 times and 32 times over Parabit, ISP and OSP. And uh, Flash Cosmos improves energy efficiency by up to 3.3x, uh, 13.4x and 95x on Parabit, ISP and OSP. And uh, when we realize Flash Cosmos, it comes at a, a very low cost and requires no changes to the Flash cell arrays. So these are the highlights of uh, Flash Cosmos. And uh, as I said, there are a lot more uh, analysis and uh, results in our uh, paper. And please go through the paper and let us know if you have any feedback or uh, questions. So this marks the end of my presentation today and uh, I'll be happy to take questions. Uh, thank you.